There are numerous gangster movies based on real life individuals and events. And when it comes to portraying actual gangland killings, some of these films stick closely to the truth, whereas others use a whole lot of artistic license. Let's check out a few examples. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organized crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today, we're going to take a quick look at various gangster movies and explore how they portrayed real-life gangland killings. The following examples will just be a very top-level look at the actual mob hit. Each of these gangland killings could be analysed and discussed in greater detail in their own dedicated video. In the Martin Scorsese film Casino, the character of John Nance is the bagman for the Midwest crime bosses. He collects the skim money from the casinos and delivers it to the character of fictional mob boss Remo Gaggi, based on Chicago outfit powerhouse Joseph Joey Dove's Ayupa. In the final act of the film, as the authorities close in, John Nance's character has fled to Costa Rica. Joe Pesci's voiceover informs us that John Nance's son has been picked up by the feds on drug charges and that the bosses were worried that John Nance would come out of hiding to save his kid and give up all the bosses to the authorities. Hitmen track John Nance down to Costa Rica and execute him at his tropical villa. In reality, John Nance is a fictional character who is a composite of several real-life individuals, but mainly based on a mob associate by the name of George J. Vandermark. J. Vandermark was more than just a money career for the mob. He was in fact an expert at casino skimming. As Nicholas Pledge's book Casino states, Among the innovations Vandermark brought to the Stardust was to rig the slot machine meters to falsely record one-third more in wins than were actually being paid out. It was a brilliant stroke, because when the slot machines were emptied and the coins taken to the count room, the electronic scale used to weigh the coins had been rewired to underweigh the coins by one third. Vandermark now had one third of the entire slot machine coin count available to skim. Since the slot machines had been rigged to indicate that players had taken that amount home with them as wins. It is estimated that Jay Vandermark skimmed somewhere between 7 to 15 million dollars from 1974 to 1976. When the authorities raided the Stardust Casino in May 1976, Vandermark fled, allegedly with 3 million dollars of the outfit's money. Some sources state that he was seen in Phoenix with members of Tony Spilotro's crew, and then under a false name he flew to Mexico. While hiding in Mexico, some say Jay Vandermark was murdered. However, Chicago outfit mobster turned informant Nick Calabrese stated that Vandermark was killed in Phoenix and buried in the desert. He said that John Fecarotta and James LaPietra met with Vandermark and murdered him. His body has never been found. Vandermark did have a son, Jeff Vandermark who allegedly had a drug problem and worked for the gaming board. It is believed that Jeff Vandermark told the authorities his father might be willing to testify. However, Jay Vandermark was killed before anything came of this. Jeff Vandermark was murdered himself on April 23rd, 1977, bludgeoned to death in his Las Vegas apartment. In the 1991 film Mobsters, the highly fictionalised account of the rise to power of Charlie Luciano, there are multiple historical gangland murders that are inaccurately portrayed. Let's take a look at one of them, the killing of Vincent Mad Dog Cole. The film shows hired assassin Mad Dog Cole machine gunned to death by Charlie Luciano in the office of a character named Salvatore Faranzano. This all happens in the movie immediately before Maya Lansky, Frank Costello and Bugsy Siegel drop the Faranzano character out of a window. In reality, as most know, Salvatore Maranzano, who Faranzano is based on, was stabbed and shot to death by a team of Jewish hitmen led by Samuel Red Levine and included Abraham Bo Weinberg. Here is the 1931 coroner's sketch of the fatal injuries that Maranzano received. 
As far as Vincent Mad del Col, he was actually on his way to a meeting with Maranzano that day, but was never present in the office when Maranzano was murdered. In fact, Mad del Col was actually walking up the stairs when the Jewish hit team spotted him as they were fleeing the scene and told him that the police were on their way. Despite what is shown in the film, in real life, Vincent Cole was killed the following year in February 1932. Mad Dog Cole had been kidnapping members of the underworld and holding them for ransom, including George Big Frenchy de Monge, the business partner of powerful mobster Oni Madden. Madden paid a $30,000 ransom for the return of his friend. It is alleged that only the killer Madden and Dutch Schultz put a $50,000 bounty on Vincent Cole's head. Then, on the 8th of February 1932, the 23-year-old Vincent Cole was in the London chemist on West 23rd Street, using the phone booth at the back of the drugstore. Mob law tells us that Vincent Cole was on the phone to Oni Madden and was trying to shake him down for money, threatening to kidnap Oni Madden's brother-in-law. However, Madden was keeping Cole on the phone long enough so that a hit team could arrive and take him out. Around 10 past 1 in the morning, a car containing three men pulled up outside the London chemists. Two men got out, one stood guard outside and another entered the store. Making his way to the rear of the chemists, he then machine gunned Mad Dog Cole to death with 15 bullets. It is rumoured that the car was driven by Bo Weinberg, although some sources suggest that Weinberg was the actual gunman. In the film The Irishman, based on the life of Frank Sheeran, the movie shows the killing of Anthony Three Fingers Castellito, portrayed by John Senatiempo. Castellito was a growing power in the unions, and the film shows him being strangled to death in a car by Genovese mobster Salvatore Sally Bugs Brigulio. Sally Bugs then disposes of the body in a wood chipper. In 1961, in real life, Anthony Three Fingers Castellito wasn't strangled in a car, but murdered in the house of his upstate New York farm, and Sally Bugs committed the murder with Jewish hitman Harold K.O. Konigsberg. Konigsberg would later turn informant. Konigsberg stated that they originally planned to bury the body, but changed their minds. The film states that the order to murder Anthony Castellito came from Genovese family powerhouse, Anthony Tony Pro Provenzano. And this is believed to be true to actual events. The depiction of Anthony Castellito's corpse being put through a tree shredder may well be true. Anthony Provenzano ordered the killing of mobster Cookie Falgno in 1972, and it is believed that his corpse was put through a tree shredder. So either the two killings are being confused, or that the use of a tree shredder was a method of corpse disposal that Tony Pro's men favoured. The film Billy Bathgate is based on the fictional book of the same name. Jewish hitman Bo Weinberg, portrayed by Bruce Willis, is shown alive on a boat with his feet encased in a bucket of cement. Dutch Schultz, played by Dustin Hoffman, then kicks him in the back into the East River. Bo Weinberg sinking fast into the water, drowning. The film states that Bo Weinberg had betrayed his boss, Dutch Schultz, by plotting with Charlie Luciano, with Weinberg looking to replace Schultz at the head of the gang. The exact details of Abraham Bo Weinberg's death are still up for debate. However, the film might be pretty close to what happened in some respects. Bo Weinberg was a feared killer, who as previously mentioned, was one of the hitmen sent by Charlie Luciano and Mylansky to murder Salvatore Maranzano. He was allegedly a long-time friend of gangster Dutch Schultz and the pair worked together, with Weinberg allegedly one of Schultz's chief lieutenants. Sources indicate that Bo Weinberg was conspiring with Luciano in 1935 to take out Schultz who was having legal issues and was in the crosshairs of District Attorney Tom Dewey. Weinberg would then take over Schultz's operations. However, Dutch Schultz found out and then on September the 9th, 1935, Weinberg left a Manhattan nightclub and vanished. Some sources say that Schultz shot Weinberg himself in a hotel and then cased his body in cement and dumped him in the East River. Others say that Bo Weinberg was shot by Bernard Lulu Rosenkranz while Dutch Schultz was present. 
In the movie Billy Bathgate, Lulu Rosencrantz is portrayed by John Costello. But all stories have one common denominator, being that Bo Weinberg was dumped in the East River. A 1940 newspaper stating, Bo Weinberg, who was frozen by the feet into concrete and dropped into the water. Mafia legend states that Dutch Schultz said to George Weinberg, Bo's brother, we had to put a kimono on Bo. Kimono being Schultz's phrase for encasing someone in concrete. Back to Martin Scorsese's film The Irishman. The movie shows Frank Sheeran murdering Colombo family rebel Crazy Joe Gallo at Umberto's after being given the go-ahead by Russell Buffalino. In reality, it is firmly believed that Carmine Sonny Pinto DiBiase was the primary shooter in the Crazy Joe Gallo killing. Joey Gallo had been spotted out celebrating his birthday in Umberto's by mobster Joseph Jopesh Luparelli. Luparelli then made his way to the Kingwa Chinese restaurant. Sat at the bar in the Chinese restaurant was Carmine Sonny Pinto DiBiase and Colombo soldier Philip Fat Fungi Gambino. Luparelli told them that he had seen Gallo in Umberto's. They then rang Joseph Joe Yak Yacovelli, who gave them the okay to hit Joey Gallo. They rounded up the La Cicero brothers, Frank and Benny, who were also present, and then travelled up to Umberto's in two cars. Sonny Pinto and the La Cicero brothers then entered Umberto's shooting and took out Joey Gallo, who stumbled out of the restaurant, collapsing, and died on the street. In the movie Casino, the characters Nicky Santoro and his brother Michael, based on Anthony and Michael Spilotro, are shown being beaten to death by baseball bats and then buried while still breathing. In real life, they were murdered in the basement of a house. Pathologist Dr. John Pless said they were beaten with hands, knees and feet rather than by baseball bats. Their corpses were then transported to a cornfield in Indiana and buried. When asked if the Spilotro brothers were buried alive, Dr. John Pless said, no, there was no evidence of that. I've covered their deaths in greater detail in a previous video and have left the link to this in the description below. In both the 1996 movie Gotti and the 2018 Gotti movie starring John Travolta, John Gotti is shown being given an order by family boss Carlo Gambino to avenge the kidnapping and murder of his nephew Manny Gambino. A man called James McBratney was then said to be the man responsible for Manny Gambino's death. The actual killing of McBratney is more accurately shown in the 1996 movie with Ralphie Wiggs Galeone shooting McBratney, whereas the Travolta movie has Gotti pulling the trigger himself, which was not the case. However, where both movies are inaccurate is that James McBratney had nothing to do with the murder of Carlo Gambino's nephew. James McBratney was part of a gang that was kidnapping made men and holding them for ransom. For this reason alone, John Gotti may well have been given the order to have him killed. The man who killed Manny Gambino was called Henry Robert Sentner. But he didn't kidnap Carlo Gambino's nephew. Henry Sentner murdered Manny Gambino during a dispute. After killing Gambino, Henry Sentner, who is often mistaken for being the uncle of Anthony Centur, similar name, different spelling, then had the idea of faking a kidnapping and sending a ransom note to Manny Gambino's family. This is documented in various sources, including a book by FBI agent Anthony Villano, who was part of the kidnapping case. Sentner and his accomplices were eventually caught, and Henry Robert Sentner was convicted and served time for the murder of Manny Gambino. But, as mentioned, James McBratney had nothing to do with the Manny Gambino affair, and so John Gotti was never sent to avenge his death. But he was involved in the McBratney killing for other reasons. I have covered the murder of Manny Gambino in greater detail in a previous video, and I have left the link for this in the comments below. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.